Hi everyone, welcome to Christine's channel. Today we're talking about extruded aluminum, and in particular just kind of an intro to extruded aluminum. Some of the things that I've kind of researched and figured out that might be tips and tricks to help you out also. Welcome to the shop. This is our metal and wood shop. This is where we're going to do most of the construction for the van. Although, you, as you know, we don't have a van here yet. It's on order. Hopefully it'll be here sometime this year. And literally, I mean this year. That would be nice. In preparation for that, we're starting to get materials and starting some projects. Be ready for when the van gets here so we can start construction. One of the things we're going to use in the van in particular is extruded aluminum. If you remember from the minivan build, I used a lot of aluminum and wood and steel in the construction. I used a lot of different mixed materials. In the bed construction, I used quite a bit of square tube aluminum and flat sheet aluminum and riveted and bonded it together. So behind me is my Prince LSR. That's where I learned to do aluminum and steel work or rebuilt that car with my good friend Pat Prince about 15 years ago. So we'll take a quick ch check of that. So if you look here, you'll see all of this aluminum work. Now this is all made out of flat sheets of aluminum and square tube aluminum. So you can see there's quite a bit of aluminum there and that's where I learned how to do that. Pieces like this, this curved piece, this is part of the tunnel. This material here is actually all flat aluminum. We then fold it, ran it through the shrinkered stretcher, which is actually a little hand device that either shrinks or stretches so it forms the aluminum. These pieces here we just mocked up out of cardboard first cut them out of flat aluminum, and again, then we rivet and bond all that together. So that's where I learned how to build aluminum. And I'm not a professional at this, I'm an amateur. This is not my job. I do these things on the side, this is just fun for me. I would consider myself an accomplished amateur. I do have some experience, but I don't think it is enough experience that most people can't tackle something like this. I have not worked with extruded aluminum before. Now extruded aluminum is actually aluminum that's pushed through a die to make a shape out of it. In particular, slotted aluminum. One of the things I found when looking for the extruded aluminum is ordering. There was a wide, wide range of pricing from one manufacturer to another. The cost per foot was dramatically different. The manufacturers I found are the most common manufacturers. You'll hear 8020 used quite a lot. People use 8020 as kind of a generic term for slotted aluminum. Um, they are a manufacturer of it and a common one. T-slot is another one, which just happens to be the, the I ordered from T-slot. And I'll get into why here in a little bit. I found some generic ones online on eBay and Amazon both that didn't really say who manufactured it. So for all I know, it's 8020 or, or T-slot. There was also, uh, you could get it through like McMaster Car, which is a large supplier. We order a lot through McMaster Car. They're based close to us, so nuts and bolts and rivets, you know, a lot of hard to, hard to find things. They also had extruded aluminum or slotted extruded aluminum. So there are a number of places for it. To order them, what I did is I ended up drawing up a small picture. I drew up a picture of what I wanted to build, and then that would give me my cut list, the sizes of each piece that I needed. Once I had those sizes, you could order it in, you know, eight foot pieces and then cut each of those down. That would be then the most efficient. That's how I normally would build with wood and, and so forth. But the problem is the shipping on eight foot pieces is quite a lot because of how long it is. So even though it's the cheapest way to buy it per foot, by the time you add shipping onto that, it might not be the cheapest way to get it. So what I ended up doing is I ended up going online and I went to 8020, it's, it was just 8020.net, and you can order them directly from them. And I put then the sizes that I needed in the longest pieces possible and calculated out what it would be in estimated shipping to see what that would cost. But you can also buy it in shorter pieces. So in other words, if you need three two foot pieces, you could order an eight foot piece and then cut that into um, three two foot pieces and have a little excess. It would be cheaper per foot to order that way, but the cost to ship an eight foot piece was more than to ship three two foot pieces. You had to put it in there many ways. So I broke it down into the smallest pieces I needed and added those in there and saw what that would be for shipping wise. And that was actually cheaper because the shipping was cheaper to order it in smaller pieces, even though the per foot price of the extruded aluminum was more that way. So then I went then to other websites. I went on Amazon, I went on eBay, same thing. I entered it both different ways to see what would be the cheapest way for me to get it. T-slot, you couldn't order from direct. They had distributors. So it said find a distributor and you could find a distributor. But I did find on eBay a, a seller it's called T-slot. Now whether that's a distributor or the direct from T-slot, I don't know. But when I put it through those, 
it was cheaper per foot by a good bit, although the shipping was the most out of all of them. Um, the box that I showed you earlier cost $130 to ship to me. But given the fact that the per foot price was so much less, when I put together the total order, that was still the cheapest way to get it here. Even though it was expensive shipping, it was cheaper per foot and then the cheapest to get it to me. What I did then is compare all those different websites, different ways to get it in links and sizes and found out the cheapest way to get it. And that's how I then order. So kind of a tip there is, is to shop multiple places, but also try to figure out multiple different ways that you can order the material, different lengths and so forth, to see then what would be the easiest or cheapest way to get it to you. I actually thought the cheapest way for me to get it would be to order from somewhere that I could go pick it up. McMaster Car is close enough to us that I can go get it. So I ordered, I went through them and looked it up, how much it would be with no shipping for me to go pick it up. They were more expensive per foot so it was actually cheaper for me to get it shipped to me through the eBay account than it was to actually order and go pick it up. Which, if I wouldn't have shopped around, I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have thought going to pick it up would be the cheapest way no matter what. Just a little tip that way to shop around a little bit and see what you can get then the cheapest based on length and based on shipping versus if you have a place to go pick it up. I actually ordered six foot pieces and some smaller pieces. Actually, the shipping this way was not the cheapest, but combined shipping and cost is what made this the cheapest way to get it to me. As I said, extruded aluminum is aluminum that has been pushed through a die to make a particular shape. In this case, a slotted aluminum. You can see here, it has a very specific shape to it that leaves slots in the side. The advantage of these slots then is that you can put fasteners in these slots and that allows you then to use this almost like an erector set and build, it's very versatile. Why aluminum over anything else? Mainly because of strength. Aluminum itself, per size and weight, is stronger than wood. As we did in the minivan build when we used square tube aluminum, the advantage of that was that in the same size area, I could get more strength out of it without taking up width that I would if I was building out of wood. And so to get the same strength that this has, you need more wood. So let's say this is equal to a two by four, this is one by one. In a, a captive area where it's a drawer, let's say, you've got a two inch piece, or a, inch and a half for a uh, two by four and a two by four an inch and a half versus one by one that's a full inch of width you're going to lose in that drawer and in a van an inch in all your drawers makes a big difference the advantage of the extruded aluminum here is strength lightweight and modularity to it they make all kinds of fasteners you can put in here into this slot to put things together on angles, straight up and down, 90s, 45s, they make hinges, they make you know all kinds of stuff to do that. In the past, I've just used one by one square tube aluminum. And this is what we use for the minivan, the bed build. This is then the one by one slot of aluminum. So same size, but has the slots in it for modularity. Normally then to fasten this, I would drill it out, put a brace in, you know, a flat piece of aluminum and glue and rivet that together. With this, you'll be able to stick fasteners in here to put it together instead. Like I said, you have the nice slot here, and because of that, you can then add fasteners into here. There are different types of fasteners. What this one is, this is considered a roll-in type fastener. If you can see there, it has a rounded edge to it. That rounded edge allows you then to drop it or roll it into this space here, and then you can move it along there. The advantage of the rounded is if you have this built already and it is captured on this end where you can't then put a just a regular slot in to have them in ahead of time, you can roll one of those in. This one also has a set screw in it. So if you look here, it has a little set screw. That set screw allows us then, once this is in place here, to then fasten it down so it holds into place. You can, it takes just a quarter 20 bolt. This one happens to be a button head cap screw. And then you would have something, whatever you have fastened onto there, this can be any length to make that work however. These slotted ones are cheaper and they go in, but you have to put them in before you assemble this all together. Because if you need this in here, once this is together, you'd have to take it back apart then to get that in there. That's what the roll-ins come in handy, so if you ever forget, you have a way to add something to it. Another way to do this, and which is what we plan on doing quite a lot, this hole here, you tap and thread this hole. Tapping and threading this hole then will allow you to bolt straight into it. In the case of most of these connections, 
this will be tapped it can then be put into here and a bolt put all the way through on this edge a bolt put through here holding it on on the website it talks about then the strength this is the second strongest attachment to actually go, drill through here and put a bolt threaded into this other piece so extruded aluminum comes in many different shapes and sizes most of them just the most common then is a four-sided part where all four sides have a slot it comes in where you just have one side with a slot three sides solid two sides with a slot two sides solid they come in curved for finished panels so forth there's also a little bit of nomenclature behind this that you have to realize that I didn't when I started looking. This is what's considered fractional, meaning it's on an inch scale instead of millimeters. They have metric where it comes on millimeters. I have to use fractional on an inch. So this is a one by one. In a one inch by one inch piece, they call this 1010 series. So 10, one inch, one inch, 1010. They also make it then in many different shapes. This happens to be then a one inch by two inch piece. So this is a 1020. That's the difference. It's one inch by two inch, 10, 20. If this were one and a half by two, it would then, I don't know if they make that, but then it would be a 15, 20. And then they, if it were a two by two, it would be 20, 20. 10, 10 series is one by one. The 10, 20 series, which we're gonna use a lot of, is then one by two. So the reason that series matters is also because of your uh, fasteners. The 10, 10 fasteners are obviously a different size because the slot is a different size than in 1515 or 2020. The 1010 series or the one inch series has a different fastener than you will get for then the 2020 series, let's say, or 1515 series. A little bit then on the building or the use of slotted aluminum or extruded aluminum. One of the things you're gonna have to do then is you're gonna have to cut that aluminum somehow. Traditionally, when I work with aluminum, which again, up till now has always been just square tube aluminum, I would use then the chop saw. Just the chop saw like this has a fiber blade in it and we use this to cut steel, cuts aluminum. This is what we've used traditionally for all this. Now the disadvantage of cutting with that is you can see here it leaves then aluminum in there. You have to then go back in and file this out. Usually gives you a pretty square cut. Now a lot of times I'll actually have to take this to square it off and make it perfectly square. I will then run it on the sander and then you get a perfectly square edge to it. So you can see how it leaves aluminum in there. This has to then be filed off to make this a nice square piece. So in this case, instead of using the chop saw, I'm going to use a miter saw. In particular, I've taken an old miter saw that I had that we used to use for wood projects and so forth, and I've added a metal blade to it. They make these metal blades. You can buy them then, and, and you just have to watch the speed of your miter saw um, and make sure that matches or is less than what the blade is allowed to spin. Look at then the size mounting of this and order then. I found this on Amazon is where I happened to find it. It's made by Lennox. I looked locally. I couldn't find one at our hardware store, so I ended up having to order this online. But again, it's good for ferrous and non-ferrous metal, so it will cut softer metal, steel and aluminum. And it does a better job. It makes a nice square cut. Also, because this miter saw then can angle up to 45 degrees, the blade tilts also, I can actually make more compound joints and get a better finish and a better fit then to the material inside the van, the pieces that we're building in the van. So you can see how much cleaner then the chop saw metal blade does. It doesn't leave a lot of shavings. It leaves a nice square cut. This is then the way I'm gonna build and use for the slotted aluminum. I would absolutely use a clamp on here. I don't think I would try to hold this by hand. And if it were a long enough piece, I would put a clamp on both sides of this to keep that from coming off or trying to get picked up or shot around. There you go. Hopefully that's a nice little introduction into extruded or slotted aluminum. This is going to be a new experience for us. We have not used it extensively. It'll be interesting to see how it works out over just square tube and uh, flat panels with rivets. 
Also, we built some cabinets out of wood in the past. It'll be interesting to see how well this works compared to building out of wood. Um, but given the fact that this is lighter for the same amount of strength, we can make very strong parts in it in the van. It's also modular. You'll be able to do more adjustments to that, fine tuning of it as we build and as you work along without having to just scrap a piece entirely. I think there's some large advantages to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed a little intro to, to Slot Aluminum. Hopefully you've picked up a couple little tips that uh, will help you in ordering and in working with this. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.